Americans are living much longer than they used to, and many seniors are likely to need assistance with at least some everyday activities. Because of this, baby boomers find themselves having to help their parents with anything from eating, dressing, or even just moving around. Taking care of mom or dad can be challenging, long-term, and for some, life-changing. Here on Long Island, My Renee Elman and her mother Bertha shared this oh, home mother. for 18 years. Bertha lived in the studio downstairs, so when she began showing signs of Alzheimer's a few years ago, it was only natural that Renee would take care of her. We had this apartment made for my mother when we first moved in here. This was, of course, a new stove that she got. We had to uh, take the knobs off because we were afraid she would uh, forget and leave the gas on. It's kind of like a studio. It started out first yeah. that I would get a call this is when she was still driving, she that she couldn't start the car, or she would walk somewhere and she would fall and I'd yeah, end up finding her in the hospital. We basically found along the way that she started to go downhill uh, to the point where her thought process was very fragmented. She loved sleeping on a couch, her own entrance, so she can go out to the backyard anytime she wanted. Renee noticed gradual changes in her normally independent mother's behavior. She wanted to die. She didn't want to eat anymore. And we actually would sit with her and, you know, almost like spoon feed her. And her mother's recurrent late night wandering kept Renee awake. Renee's fiance Steve once even found Bertha outside in the middle of the night, covered only by a blanket. I said, how do I do this? How do I deal with this? And it was very, very stressful. Dr. Jane Greer is a marriage and family therapist in New York City. There can be a lot of stress, particularly if it's an elderly parent who needs constant attention, which is going to be a lot of financial responsibility, or needs constant attention in terms of a lot of care. Well, this is Grandma's uh, hospital bill that we're still waiting for the Medicaid to come through. So You used to have this person who parented you and now you become the parent and they become the child. She doesn't have hip anymore either. That was got canceled. Tu affezionatissima mamma e papà. Happy birthday, my daughter. She didn't mean <laughs> Rosa Cherlio and her family came to New York City from Italy over 30 years ago. She's lived across the street from her mother, Teresa, for decades. So when Teresa became ill, Rosa retired to be there when she came home from the hospital. I had to take care of her for two months. She was in the chair. Her legs were swollen and she was very, very sick. The meals, the washing, and then she was taking water pills, so she was wet herself, and you had to wash all the stuff and change her, and you know, it's like 24 hours job. But Rosa says the hardest part about staying home with her mother for that long was keeping busy. You know, have a chance to get out, to say, you know, these two hours, you stay here and I'm going to get out. I just, I want to go to the store, just to get out. 24 hours a day, it's really, really hard. It's really hard. And I had nobody to switch with. You know, if it was one night, me, and one night, like my sister-in-law, my own, or have another sister, it was different. Though Rosa never wanted to trouble any of her children, she said they would always be there if she needed them. If my, my oldest son is a pharmacist. He helped me so much. He helps me so much with the medications, with the answer of the doctors, to calling the doctors because, you know, he understands the medications and everything. I can understand everything that the doctors say. And Susanna, she's, forget it, if I, anything I ask. This is to my honey in the ear. She, you know, she helps. She helps a lot. And my second son, my second son too. Having my daughter here was like, um, it was like a miracle, <laughs> you know. She would call me, I would call her, how's, how's grandma? We would piggyback it, you know, we're just like, are you gonna be home tonight? Are you gonna be home tonight? And we would do a lot of things like that. For Rosa, some occasional relief came from her brother Dominic, who lives on Long Island but worked nearby. He would spend his lunch hour at home with their mother. He always was here. 
and calling me every single day before he came what I need. If I need anything for her, if I need food, if I need, a, you know, something for lunch, if I, you know, he always ready. Renee, on the other hand, anticipated a little more help from her siblings. I would have been more pleased with um, more family participation. Just because she lived with me didn't mean that I was the only one. Renee's older brother Al lives nearby. So tell tell Al about uh, you know your dinner. You know uh, you just finished it. Yeah. Yeah, what did you just eat? You just I did. It. Yeah. I ate it already. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. Tell him. The thing about having my brother around and being close it would have been good if he was able to be there. You know, if he really, really and truly could have, you know, uh, he would come over and take her to lunch. Al says his own struggle with cancer prevented him from being present as much as he would have liked, so he gives Renee a lot of credit. I believe that in every family there has to be someone who's the head, the alpha dog, or someone who takes the lead. Renee, in her situation, living with mom and taking care of mom was the person and she really did a phenomenal job. He and his wife were there as much as they could when I asked. Whatever little bits that I and my family could do to help with it was very, you know, I must say menial. My brother Barry really didn't have any opportunity to, to do anything. Renee's younger brother, Barry, lives on Staten Island. I spoke with him, um, discussed things with him, and, and he would tell me, well, just let me know what you're doing, um, or, you know, keep in touch with me, let me know. And it was always something like that, and I, I felt, okay, well, I really can't depend on him. So I, I didn't. What was best for my mother, I depended on my sister for that. Uh, I used to come and take my mother sometimes for lunch at the diner, and uh, we would have to stop and get her medication. And I said, Mom, I'll take care of it, because she wanted to give me money. And when I went in to pick up one prescription, it was $79. And I thought it was a mistake. And um, I laid out the money, and I just did whatever I had to do. Sometimes the division of labor is organized in terms of differentials where one person, the man may pay more, the, the brother may pay more, and the sister may do more. Dr. Roberta Seitao is a sociology professor at Brooklyn College and a practicing psychoanalyst in Manhattan. She wrote, Doing the Right Thing, Taking Care of Your Elderly Parents Even If They Didn't Take Care of You, a book that combines her personal experiences with those of other caregivers. She says it's much more rare for a man to be a caregiver if he has a sister. And also when men are, when you have a brother and sister and, the, and, and they're both participating in it, generally the division of labor is a gendered division of labor, that the men are more likely to mow the lawn or, or take, have, be the power of attorney, you know, or um, be the executor of the will, or do those kinds of things, whereas the women are the ones who do the emotional tasks. Caring for an elderly parent can really wreak havoc on adult sibling relationships. And Dr. Greer says old feelings of sibling rivalry can often manifest themselves during this time. The roles that you played in childhood, if you were the middle child or the favorite, can reflect the kind of care you give to your elderly parents. Those play into the expectations that not only your parents will have, but siblings as well. They have other issues in their own lives. So I tried not to, to put the burden and I didn't also, I didn't want to feel like a martyr or, but I, I, somebody had to do it. And I didn't want to say I'm doing everything because I never wanted to, to say that. Sometimes I felt like it, but I said, if I don't, then who will? It must be about your relationship with your parent or parents. If your mother needs care, the question you want to ask yourself is, what do I want to do to be a good son? What do I want to do to be a good daughter?